man, I'm just trying to play some Vito VR, and I keep getting bothered by news. I have to uh, give credit to Ben Time Traveler because he went live and spoke uh, just for a few minutes to this issue. So I went ahead and did a little Googling, and uh, what did I come up with? Holy cow. So I will leave a link, as always, in the description and in the first comment of this video. But uh, I want to point out what is really going on here. And this happens way more than what people even realize. So let's go on over to the web view. And it says, uh, San Francisco voters send clear message supporting more aggressive response to drug crisis. Okay, fair enough. The article goes on to say a contentious ballot measure sponsored by Mayor London Breed to mandate drug screenings for welfare recipients passed Tuesday, sending a clear message that voters want to see a more aggressive response to the city's drug crisis. Okay, sounds, some people would say sounds fair. I wouldn't, and the reason why is because, for one, I know where this really leads, and for two, uh, really, are we a communist country now? Because that's pretty damned ridiculous. It says the measure was backed by 63% of the vote as of Wednesday morning. Proposition F requires adults who receive cash assistance from San Francisco to undergo a drug screening and enroll in a free treatment program if they're determined to be drug users. Okay? Here is where the, uh, the magic is, if you will. They must then actively participate in treatment, but will not be mandata mandated to test negative for drugs. Say what? Says those who fail to participate in treatment will be stripped of their city cash assistance, but remain eligible for food stamps and medical benefits from the state. The new regulation will take effect January 1, 2025. So let's slow down and let's unwrap this a little bit. Okay, so what is going on here? This isn't the regular state welfare that they're going to be uh, involved in this treatment program and this testing. This is their own little cities. Remember their, uh, what do they call that? Their universal basic income stuff. Um, that's what this is. Okay, so you don't want to associate this when it comes to the state welfare program. They're two totally separate things. Okay. So if they, you know, let's say they say, no, I'm not, not going to take a test and they get kicked off the city's little universal basic income thing, they can still get their welfare from the state. So there are two separate things. That's number one. Number two, it plainly states that if they get drug tested and they fail, and as long as they go to this drug treatment program, okay, then, <laughs> then they don't get kicked off the program, right? If, if they continue to test uh, positive for drugs, okay, as long as they keep continuing to go to these drug, you know, treatment programs and continue to get drug tested, well, they can keep getting the money. So it may make you wonder, right, what is, uh, what is going on with this? Well, this is what is going on with this. This has nothing to do with... Uh, dealing with the drug crisis. This has everything to do with lining the pockets of private business, okay? Because number one, you have the drug test kits. Those aren't cheap, right? Anything that the state or in this case city pays for, it's never cheap. So you've got somebody that uh, is that owns the company that makes those drug tests, so they're lining their pockets, and you also have whoever it is, the private entity that runs this this drug treatment program, and they are really going to fatten their pockets, and, and it's just a rinse and repeat, so as long as people go test, even if they test positive, they just go to their classes, and guess what? These folks get rich, the people never get kicked off the benefits, and it's 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 a win win, right? Win win. And guess guess where that money's coming from, by the way, in order to pay for all the drug tests and for the drug treatment programs. Hmm. Hmm. Where's it coming from? The magic money fairy, you think? I'm pretty sure it's coming from taxes. So let's continue on, shall we? 
Those who fail to participate in treatment will be stripped of their city cash assistance. And, of course, I already read this, but will remain eligible for food stamps and medical benefits from the state because that's a different program, okay? Already told you when it would take effect. We're going to go ahead and continue. It says, Breed told reporters that the passage of two of her ballot measures, Proposition E and F, would help give her the kinds of tools I need to continue the work we're doing to improve public safety and respond to the drug crisis. Proposition E expands the power of San Francisco police and places new limits on the San Francisco Police Commission. I know that people are starting to feel the difference. We have to, I mean, I'm sure. I mean, some people's pockets are already getting filled up, right? We have to make sure we continue that momentum, she said. These are additional tools that are going to help us bring more money to our buddies' pockets. Oh, to deliver some real results for San Francisco. Okay, I'm still trying to find out where these results are going to come from here. Breed, who is seeking re-election, proposed the measure last year amid mounting pressure to better address public drug use and San Francisco's worsening overdose epidemic, which, by the way, this will do nothing to, to help. San Francisco last year recorded its deadliest year for accidental overdose deaths with 813 reported fatalities, four out of every five involved fentanyl. Now, I don't know much about fentanyl. And I'm not one of those people to go out there and just make stuff up. In fact, I'm pretty sure I go against that. I don't know how long fentanyl stays in your system. And I could look it up right now, but I really don't care. If somebody wants to comment, let me know. That's cool. I'm really not that concerned with it. Um, I would assume that fentanyl, like most drugs, probably doesn't stay in your system much longer than, you know, after the effects are worn off. Uh, things like cocaine and stuff like that, they don't stick around in your system. The only thing that really sticks around in your system is marijuana. That's it. Uh, most of the other drugs are, are pretty well gone shortly after the effects are gone. So anyway, it goes on to say, despite a 2008 voter-approved measure, the mandated San Francisco provide enough substance use treatment spaces on demand to meet the needs of those addicted. The city has failed to do so. Treatment bed shortages and insufficient staffing, which city officials blame on competition from other cities and lack of, of sufficient funds, stand in the way. The measure is part of a larger shift by breed away from the harm reduction which seeks to minimize negative health effects of drug use without requiring people to stop using and toward more forced treatment and law enforcement crackdowns. Breed in 2017 helped create the city's supervised drug use task force and was a strong supporter of safe consumption sites, which are a part of the harm reduction model. But at a rally just a week before Tuesday's election, you know, just before the election, Breed changed her tune, saying that harm reduction was not reducing the harm, but making things far worse. Who'd have thunk it? Breed's health department staunchly stands by harm reduction, putting her at odds with her own officials. And she's probably not against it either. It's just to make money for her buddies and to win those votes, yo. Breed in 2022 opened up the controversial Tenderloin Center in hopes of getting more homeless people dealing with addiction connected to treatment. Although staff at the center reversed more than 300 overdoses, fewer than 1% of visits resulted in connections to mental health or drug treatment. The measure passed Tuesday will apply to about 5,200 San Franciscans who, re who receive monthly cash payments through the uh, County Adult Assistance Program. Benefits offered through the program range from $109 per month for unhoused people for up to $712 for people in housing. The city's Human Services Agency, which runs the welfare program, estimates that about a third of those in the program have a substance use disorder and will be required to engage in treatment. Critics of the measure, who include addiction treatment providers and medical professionals, argue that coercing drug users into treatment is ineffective and a misuse of resources, especially when they're not required to stop using. You see what I'm saying? That this is nonsense here. They also raise concerns about the city's lack of an implementation plan. 
San Francisco deserves better, and Jennifer Friedenbach, executive director of the Coalition on Homelessness, those suffering from addiction deserve actual solutions and real opportunities for treatment, not false promises and election year politics. Amen. Gary McCoy, spokesperson for Health Right 360, the city's largest addiction treatment provider, says he plans to spend the next nine months working with city officials to ensure the new measure is not harmful to the communities it's supposed to help. The San Francisco Controller's Office estimated that it will cost as much as $1.4 million annually to conduct the enhanced screenings required under the measure, but no additional funding was set aside. Instead, The city is expecting to pay for it using money saved by cutting off welfare recipients who fail to follow the new rules. Now remember, all they have to do is agree to get tested and then agree to go to this counseling and they don't lose their money. And how much you want to bet that the majority of people who take the test and fail will also continue to fail because nothing negative will come of it. Opponents worry that recipients who rely on cash assistance to pay their rent could also become homeless, only exacerbating the problem. Although city officials pledge that will not happen, saying they will use the money collected from the disenrollment to pay landlords and housing providers directly. Hmm. The measure voters approved did not specifically spell that out. And there again, even if they did do that, what's it change? Nada. Michael Heffer, 36, who is addicted to fentanyl and received cash assistance from the city, said the measure was unlikely to lead him to seek treatment. I'm going to find other ways to get by, he said. I've been without it before and it doesn't go very far, he said, about the funds he could, um, he could soon be in jeopardy of losing. A union representing thousands of San Francisco's public employees also came out against the measure. Attorneys representing Service Employees International Union Local 1021 say the city violated the law by placing the proposition on the ballot without first meeting with the union to discuss how it will impact workers. In a letter to the San Francisco City Attorney's Office, the union attorneys argued that it will adversely affect employee work conditions by forcing them to develop, train, and apply new screening protocols and put them at an increased risk of threats and harassment by people who are denied benefits. But see, what's that to the mayor? What's that to the mayor's administration? Nada, because they're not the ones that are in danger. They're not the ones that's going to be threatened. They're also not the ones that's going to be paying for all of this crapola. You really got to watch because there's a lot of people in politics that will just spin their wheels to make money for their buddies. And that's all they're doing. Anyway, that's the latest on what's going on in San Francisco. Shalom.